Now to develop the food jhana. No, you develop that tat jhana, the tat aruba jhana we have just described, and fix your attention on that jhana chaita. So if your mind can remain fixed for one hour, two hour, three hours, we say you attain the food arupa vajra jhana. So no, you can look the next paragraph. By taking the third arupa jhana consciousness as the object of meditation, he can further develop the fourth arupa vajra jhana. This jhana is called neva sanya na sanya yadana kusala chaita. Neva sanya na sanya yadana literally means that perception neither exists nor does not exist. It refers to the fact that the fourth arupa jhana consciousness is so subtle and refined that one cannot definitely say whether there is a consciousness or not. Consciousness is no longer noticeable at the state of this jhana. So as we go up no, to higher and jhana, our mind becomes more and more subtle, subtle and refined. So, even when you attain the fifth rupa vajra jhana, and when you develop that jhana attainment, jhana attainment means you remain in the jhana state, you stop breathing. Breathing cannot be noticed anymore. So, when you go higher to a rupa jhana, again the mind becomes more and more subtle. So, when you come to the fourth a rupa jhana, even the mind cannot be no so cannot be noticed very well you know, cannot be seen any anymore but the mind it exists but it's so subtle that you know, it's seen that it does not exist and that's why we say neva sanya na sanya yarana kusala chaita now the five rupa vajra jhanas they are different from one another in the number of jhana factors now, in the case of the four arupa vajra jhanas, they have the same jhana factors as the fifth rupa vajra jhana. Because we base on the fifth rupa vajra jhana and we develop this arupa vajra jhana. So, all of them, they have only upika ikagatas as their jhana factors. And they are different from one another in the object they take. You know, like the agasa nanjayarana, Chaita takes space as its object. Vinya Nanjayana Chaita takes this Akasa Nanjayana Chaita as its object. Akinjanyayana Chaita takes nothingness as its object. And Neva Sanya Nasanya Yarana Chaita takes this Akasa Nyayana Chaita as its object. The objects are different. Now we can read the names of the four no? Arupa Vajrajana on page 53. So in the mid middle, you know, just below the box, you know, all these four jhanas are given the negative sign as they contain only upika ekagata as their jhana factors. Now we can read the name number one. Upika ekagata sahitam akasananja yarana kusala chaitam. Number two, upika ekagata sahitam Venya Nancha Yarana Kusala Chaitam Number 3 Upika Igagata Sahitam Akinjanya Yarana Kusala Chaitam Number 4 Upika Igagata Sahitam Neva Sanya Nasanya Yarana Kusala Chaitam You can understand the meaning below. No, for example, number 1 Akasa Nancha Yarana Moral Consciousness together with equanimity and one-pointedness. Okay? So, now at the bottom of page 53, the immaterial sphere resultant consciousness. Now that means this four arupa vajra vipaka chaitas, they are named in the same way as this four arupa vajra kusla chaita. 
So in the name, you just change Kusala Jita into Vipaka Jita. And the same thing with the four Arupa Vajra Kriya Jita, you just change the name Kusala Jita into Kriya Jita. On page 54, now the second topic, we give it Supernormal Consciousness, Abhinyana Jita. So when you attain you know, these jhanas, so we say you can enjoy you know, great jhana bliss, you know, which are enjoyed by the Brahmas. So by developing this jhana, you know, the nine jhana, now you can experience you know, the bliss, the jhana bliss enjoyed by these you know, the various Brahma. So you can, you, know, you can experience by them. So just like you know, visiting, visiting those Brahma realm, no? so enjoying their, their bliss now, you can do that. And now we say you can even develop supernormal power. Now with the jhana you cannot fly in the air yet. But when you attain supernormal power, you can fly in the air. You can dive into the earth. You can walk you know, in the air. And you, know, you can create whatever you like. You can create you know, many things. And you can see, you know, like we say, divine eye. You can see, you know, not only all over the world, you can even see all the 31 planes of existence. You know, so very, very marvelous. You, know, you can do that. So the way you, know, the, the, you should do is, now, if you can develop this nine jhana, that is five rupa vajra gusla chaita, and four are rupa vajra gusla chaita, these nine chaitas, very skillfully, then you can meditate on the water kasina. So, water kasina is just, you know, you take a vessel filled with water, and you just watch, you know, meditate on that water. So you, you know, we meditate abo, abo, or water, water, water. And by doing that, you can also develop this nine to power that jhana. And the same thing, you can re develop this jhana in the fire casino, and then you know, this, the air casino, full color casino, and then light casino, and then space casino, altogether ten casino. Then the Buddha described 14 ways how to practice, you know, to develop in these various jhanas on these you know, 10 kasina, you know, 10 kasina in, in 14 ways. Then if you become very skill, skillful, you know, that means your med the concentration is very high, then your mind becomes very powerful. At that stage you can develop supernormal power. Now to develop supernormal power, well, we, de we develop the fifth Rupa Vajra Jhana first. We have to make you know, the, the base of, uh, in this fifth Rupa Vajra Jhana. Now, if you want to walk in the air, no, you re reflect on at Kasina, Patui Patui, to develop this fifth Jhana. Then you come out the jhana, then no, you come out the jhana and you make a determination. No determination. May there be a pathway of art in the air. Then no, you taking that, no, that the, the object that you want to create, you develop the fifth jhana again. As soon as the fifth jhana arises, there will be a pathway of art in the air. You can walk on there. Other people don't see that, uh, that create that pathway. They just see you, oh, walking in the air. Walking in the air. Now, if you want to go through the wall or through the mountain, then you develop the fifth jhana on space casino. On space casino. Then you come out from that fifth jhana and then you make determination. May there be space. No space. No, as a walkway through this, no, through this wall or through this mountain. Then you develop the fifth jhana again, taking that as the object. Then as soon as the fifth jhana arises, so for you, that is, no, 
there is a space through the through the mountain so you can walk through the mountain to the other side so very marvelous so if you want to develop this supernormal power please come to not the power meditation center <laughs> now as we use this fifth rupa vajra kusala chaita no as the basis of supernormal power this fifth rupa vajra kusala jana when it is associated with supernormal wisdom it is called kusala abhinyana chaita abhinyana means supernormal consciousness and for arahats they use the fifth rupa vajra kriya chaita to develop supernormal power so when they are developing supernormal power the fifth rupa vajra akusa no? kriya chaita is also called kriya abhinyana chaita so we have two abhinyana chaita kusala abhinyana chaita kriya abhinyana chaita now we have dinner break time for about one hour so now we please we meet here again at 7:30 no so i will try to teach you about meditation about one hour and then we have that on the half an hour for question and answers we shall continue our lecture on the four guardian meditations so yesterday we described you no know, two of them how to reflect on them in a simple way so we are on page 164 so we have to go you no know, the second last paragraph on page 164 so we can read first just a paragraph furthermore he should also practice a supa bhavana by reflecting on the repulsiveness of a corpse this will subdue his lust no lust mean the same thing as lopa greed no lust and sever sever means cut off his attachment to his body as well as to other people's bodies when he is well established in the perception of lord samnes even divine objects cannot tempt his mind to greed so we go it a supa bhavana no a supa mean disgusting or lord samnes no disgusting or lord samnes and no the, like the buddha so he made this meditation compulsory no during his time for the monks so when a monk no he he was ordained as a monk then his teacher should teach him how to undertake this asupa meditation no then if you no, actually to do it you have to find a corpse and you have to no do look at the corpse and try to see the disgusting nature of the corpse and then you reflect a ah, supa a ah, supa disgusting disgusting no so just like we reflect in the patuvi kasina we describe no to today patuvi kasina the art this no you you watch the art this and you reflect patuvi patuvi until you close your eyes you get the sign no you get the sign the acquired sign we say so the same thing when we do asupa bhavana no you have to go you went to the cemetery and then find a corpse there and then you have to look at the corpse no stand by the side of the corpse and then look at the corpse no from head to toe from toe to head and see try to the guest casting nature and then you reflect asupa asupa disgusting disgusting so why you are reflecting again no we say you are developing moral minds accompanied by jhana factors so when the jhana factors become quite developed then you can concentrate quite well 
Then again, you have to close your eyes from time to time. So, when you close your eyes, you can see no, the corpse, no, as you have seen it with open eyes. Then we say you attain the acquired sign, no, the learning sign. Then you continue meditation with closed eye on that acquired sign, disgusting, disgusting, until no, you get the counter sign. So, the acquired sign looks like the same original corpse. Very no, ugly, very disgusting, and very frightening, actually. So when you come to the counter side, it looks quite pleasing. No, the corpse appears like a fat person sleeping after eating to his fall. <laughs> so if you attain no, that counter sign, then you have to reflect on that counter sign. And if you can, no, your mind can remain fixed on that counter sign for one hour, two hour, three hours, we say you attain the first jhana. No, just like you attain the first rupa vajra jhana here, so now you attain the first rupa vajra jhana. Then we say you succeed in this meditation. So when you get that jhana, you also get asupa, sanya. Sanya means perception. No, perception of foulness. Foulness means the same thing as loathsomeness, disgusting, foulness. So you get it, F-O-U-L-N-E-S-S. No, perception of foulness. So when you get this perception of foulness, you can suppress no, this greed, craving, lust very effectively. So it is the way how to suppress not this greed or craving or lust by this meditation. No. So then you not crave for no, any no, any anyone's body, not in your body and not you in other bodies as well. As soon as you say, Oh, this living body is just like a corpse. No? So when we die it becomes a corpse. No? So now here, we just uh, no, do the preliminary reflection, reflection, no, as the beginning. So what we do is, if you have seen a corpse before, no, so just try to no, visualize the corpse, and then you, know, you reflect no, the disgusting, disgusting, that is asupa, asupa. That's all, you have just reflected that. No, we cannot get the, the first jhana by doing this. But just by reflecting that also we can develop you know, the, the perception of foulness to a certain extent. And then you know, we, when you get the perception of foulness in the dead corpse, then you, you should also, uh, you, know, you can also have you know, the perception of foulness on the living body, because the living body is just like a dead corpse. And actually, we have you know, the another meditation we call no kaya katasti. So we describe here, no, there is meditation on the two parts of the living body. So that means you meditate in your body to see all these thirty-two parts, no, like the head hair, the body hair, the nails, the teeth, the skin, the flesh, the bones. And then the sinews, no, and the, the the heart, the liver. So you have to see all these. And then try to you just take one that is a skeleton, no, the skeleton. You, when you can see the skeleton, then you just reflect on the disgusting nature of the skeleton. So our no, the living body, the skeleton. When you can see it, you see no, only the skeleton. When you concentrate on that. So this skeleton is similar to the dead, not the, 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 uh, a dead body skeleton, the same thing. So they are equally disgusting. So just by reflecting on you know, the, the, on your skeleton, on the disgusting nature, you can develop the first jhana. So you attain also the perception of foundness. No? So as you, as I, I, you know, as we have discussed. All our 32 parts, you know, just like we analyzed Miss Universe body the other day, in the first day, <laughs> every part is disgusting. 
no even like our liver our no our liver uh, intestine the heart they are the same thing no light like when you go to the butcher shop if you look at no the the, the livers the heart of the of the say no a, a pig or a goat so the same thing so those are disgusting or oh, disgusting so you can say oh no this body is just disgusting this body is just disgusting so now to do this meditation now what we do is not try to uh, not try to visualize a corpse and then you, know, you discard on you, you know you can also focus on your body so you can say this body is just disgusting just disgusting so if you reflect for 5 minutes or 10 minutes it would be enough now no we all are very much attached to our body no we think we are very beautiful very handsome no very beautiful so and we attached to our body we crave for other people's body and then also attached for this body so when you are attaching this body only greed is arising no greed attachment craving means greed no so this greed is the is the worst not the worst hindrance we say the horse hindrance no so to to come in down is very beneficial so one way no one simple way no i just think of it no so to reflect on the disgusting nature of our body so the buddha he described we have nine major holes what are the nine major holes two eyes two nostrils and the mouth so there are five here and then you have two ear holes so you get seven and then you have in the bottom at the agoron two holes all together nine major holes and thousands of sweat holes thousands of sweat holes and excrement are coming out from these holes all the time all the time no just like from the eyes you get the excrement so if you don't wash your face oh your eye would be very disgusting and from the nose you get the excrement also and the teeth you get the excrement there and the ears you get the excrement and from the bottom <laughs> so we have to go to the toilet very often <laughs> so they are very very you know that disgusting and also the sweat is very disgusting no if you do not bathe no you do not wash your body take a bath for 7 days then your body will smell very badly no very badly very foul smell no just like when i was in the in the no the sydney australia so i have the chance you no know, to go to the university of new south wales to study there for 10 months you no know, to study higher that the research techniques so we we lived you no know, in this apartment just a room you know, and a room so to save some money and then we don't have the phone you know, in the in the in the room so we have to use the phone booth so one day i like to use the phone booth when i went there i saw a lady inside talking very beautiful lady oh no exceptionally beautiful now she talked so long almost no i think about half an hour then she came out so i went in as soon as i went in i get the foul smell <laughs> very foul no it is it is more repulsive than a dog no the, the dog who which is not bait so the smell very foul and that smell is worse than that no very very you know foul so you can see the body is really disgusting no so just try to see this and you just you no know, reflect the body is disgusting the body is disgusting no so there will be good enough now the foot meditation is described at the bottom paragraph of that page so you when know, we just read that paragraph find only 
but not lust. He should practice marana nusati. Marana means death. No, anusati means repeated reflection. No, repeated reflection on the nature of death. The nature of your death. No, our death. We have to reflect on it. By reflecting on the nature of death, he should reflect in this way. My being alive is uncertain, but my death is certain. The perception of death will subdue his pride, greed and anger. It will help him to give up in proper search and to live without attachment with a growing sense of urgency. So these are the benefits of this reflection. So, now we should also reflect on, on the nature of our death. Now, now you can look around. Now many of your friends have already passed away. Now even now your brothers and sisters they may pass away. No, like in my case, no, my wife, my parents, and my brothers and sisters all pass away. So I'm just lucky. I'm just <laughs> so we all are lucky. We are not. We don't pass away yet. And there are some very young people, but they are babies. They pass away. No, so one day we can see our friend in good health. But the next day we heard that he passed away already. No? So you may have the, the car accident or many accidents, then you can pass away any time. No? So, and in Abhidhamma, no? Abhidhamma describes that we are dying every moment. No? So when one consciousness arises, no? together with its, its mental factors, and the karma born materiality no, and arise, we are born. And when that consciousness dissolves, we die. We die. But as no, the karma that produces our existence no, still have energy, it produces its resultant consciousness again. Its resultant consciousness and the associated mental factors and also come a born materiality. So we are born again. And then when that consciousness dissolves, perish, we also die. No? So we are dying at every consciousness moment, we say. And this is called momentary death. No? Momentary death. In Pali we call khanika marana. Khanika marana. Momentary death. No? So no, so just by you know, reflecting on this, then you can reflect, you know, as we show here, my being alive is uncertain, my death is certain. No, so you reflect like that. So this morning, no, so you practice on those two meditations, no, so Mitta Bhavana and Buddha Nusti. So in Mitta Bhavana, we radiate loving kindness to all living beings. May all living beings be happy and well. May all living beings be happy and well. And then in Buddha Nosti, we reflect you know, on an attitude of the Buddha. So we take Araham. So we reflect Araham, Araham, Araham. You know, with the knowledge that the Buddha is the noblest, and most worthy of veneration. So can you meditate quite well this morning? Someone said, oh, don't they? She meditate very well. And she feel very calm, very calm. So it's nice no, if you can, you can do it. Now, no, the, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, no, try to do this full meditation, no, full meditation. So you can do, say, about 10 minutes each. So you begin with radiating loving kindness, and then do araham, araham, and then, so just 
thinking about the disgusting nature of this body, about those extremes no, coming out from all these holes. <laughs> so you just reflect, the body is disgusting, the body is disgusting. And then, no, reflecting on the nature of death, no, so I'm thinking no, the, the, on the nature of death, then you just reflect, my being alive is uncertain, my death is certain. No, so nobody can escape death. No, all the great person, you know, even the Buddha, no, he is the most powerful person, the Buddha, but no, he cannot escape death. No, so death is the natural, no, natural way. Once you're born, no, you are growing old every second, every minute you are growing old, and you are also coming close and closer to to the cemetery, <laughs> to the dead. So whichever way we go, we are one step, one step closer to the to our dead. No, we should uh, we should know that. Now, now reflecting on this dead, not the nature of our dead, will develop the sense of urgency. So we, you know, we give you at the top of page 175. So sense of urgency. You know? So this sense of urgency is very, very, you know, very beneficial and quite important you know, because we are postponing to undertake meditation. You know? So with the idea that, oh, I will be alive you know, for 10 more years, 20 more years, I will live up to 60, 17, 80. So you know, we are thinking that I will meditate later, later, later. Now I have to find, not to get some more, some more money. No, so, so at the bottom of page, not the 164, we say there, no, it will help him to give up in proper search and to live without attachment with a growing sense of urgency. So that in proper search, no, in proper search mean, no, you are searching for money and money though you don't need any more. No, some of you have already enough to live on. No, so including myself, of course. <laughs> but we, we think, oh, it's better to get some more money. No, so that means in proper search. No, so you are just postponing the real meditation. No, the real meditation. So, you know, because of this, they are very beneficial. Okay. So on page 165, no, we try to read a few paragraphs. Moreover, a meditator or yogi, yogi means meditator, should always practice the four guardian meditations while he is performing his daily duties. As soon as he wakes up in the morning, he should reflect Araham Araham, contemplating the noble attribute of the Buddha. When he washes his face, and the face is in contact with cool, clear water, he should contemplate. May all beings be cool, calm, and pleasant as this cool, clear water. May they be happy and well. May they all beings be happy and well. And again, the next paragraph, why he brushes his teeth, washes his mouth, take a bath and defecates and urinates in the toilet, he should contemplate on the repulsiveness of the body. No, this body is repulsive. Repulsive means also disgusting. No. Now when he goes to bed, he contemplates thus, a day has passed by, I, I am coming closer to death by one more day. My being alive is uncertain, and my death is certain. Well, that we should do. <laughs> so please uh, read one more paragraph. If he always practices the four guardian meditations daily, at appropriate time, he will what up? No, what up means drive away all dangers and materialize his good wishes. No, that means all his good wishes will be fulfilled 
and develop his five powers of controlling faculties. So the five powers I told you in the from in the early the section. So the five powers are faith in the Buddha and the Dhamma, effort, mindfulness, concentration of one pointedness of the mind, and wisdom. No, they will become stronger, and this will enhance his ability to undertake the special meditation effectively. That means when you do your special meditation, say on not on mindfulness of breathing, you can develop the jhana quite quickly. And even when you go to vipassana, then they will help you not in doing the vipassana also. So in the chapter five of our Abhigama book, so there, no, uh, we describe how karma spare result. No, so there, no, in, when the Buddha described, no, the priority of karmas to bear result at the time of death to produce the new existence. So we say the first, no, the weighty karma will have the priority. The weighty kama means very strong kama, not just like jhana kama. So if you attain the jhana, and if you can maintain it to in the time till the time of death, so that jhana kama will bear result when you die. So you will be born as a Brahma. So that's quite good to be born in the Brahma. You are very powerful as a Brahma. No, and then you, are, you can live very blissfully there for at least 500 war cycles. So you can meet the next Buddha and just if you can continue to your meditation, then even by listening to the, you know, the discourse of the Buddha, you can become enlightened as a noble person. And the best thing is you know, to get the path wisdom and to become a noble person. So, no, even if we become a stream winner, we say we are guaranteed never to be reborn in the woeful state again. So, only then you will be really happy. No, otherwise, no, you, may, you, no, you, you may be worrying, oh, shall I be born in the woeful state when I die? No, so we have the, no, this, uh, this, this fear, actually. And we find that no, and when you don't get, you don't have these, you no, know, the weighty karma, then the near death karma will bear result. So that means at the time of near death is very important. No, at that time, what type of consciousness arises in you is very important. So at that time, if you can develop moral mind then definitely when you die, you will be born in celestial realm or human realm. No? So if you are heavy in moral mind at the time of near death, no? so no? developing attachment to your property, to your family, and craving for them, all these things, then you will be born in the woo state. No? So that means at the time of near death is very important. At the time of the Buddha, a monk by the name of no, Venerable Tisa, he received a new pair of robes, no, a new set of robes donated by his sister. And he wanted to wear these robes, but he fell ill and he passed away. Now, no, at, the at the time when he was about to pass away, he was thinking about this robe, not to wear it. Oh, if I am no, I, I become, I, I get well, I will wear it, I will wear it. And because of this attachment to the rope, he was born as a flea in this rope. No, though he acquired great merit no, as a man, no, just because of no, this attachment to the rope, he became a flea. No, a flea, so and a small insect, the flea there. No? And also the, the Queen Malika. Queen Malika is the chief queen of King Gosla. And she and her husband, no, King Gosla, 
they have the chance no, to donate the greatest no, amount of requisites to the Buddha and the Sangha. So, no, they, they mean during the time of our Buddha. So, among the human beings who donate to the Buddha, so they donated no, the, 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 uh, the... What do we say? No? So, the greatest amount, you might say, no, the greatest amount and the, the best donation. But she also made, no, and she also performed many meritorious deeds, but she performed an evil action. That is, one day when she went into the bathroom, a dog came into the bathroom, and she enjoyed sex with the, with the dog. So when she came out, the dog followed her. No, and then the king, Kosla, saw that, saw her with the dog no, from, from the palace. Then he asked her, why you and the dog came out together? So she made a lie. Oh, you have, you have no, the wrong vision. I came out alone. No dog, he, she, she lied. But as the king loved her very much, you know, so he forgot about this. No, he forgot about this. Now when Malika died, no, this thought, no, this thought of no, the enjoying sex with the dog, and also the, the saying that he lied. No, so appear in the mind. So when she died, she was born in a wicked hell. No, the lowest hell, the worst hell. But luckily only for seven days. No, for seven human days. Because no, the, the God karma salvaged her, no, rescued her. So no, when the God karma no, had the chance to bear his up, then she died no, from that the the war the the the, the, the held innocent state and she was born in Tusita Rem. So this shows that no the time of near death is very important. And we should make preparation for our death. No, because that is the most important actually, not to be reborn in a woman state. No, as I told you the, in the in the first day. Now, once you are born in the Volvo state, to regain the human existence is very, very difficult. No, we have to suffer no, millions of existences in the Volvo state. Only then we can be reborn as a human being. Now, the best preparation for death is to practice these four guardian meditations regularly. You can even choose one of them. For myself, I prefer Buddha, Nusti, and loving kindness. So, no, you try to reflect Araham, 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 no, the, as much as possible. So, whenever no, you are mindful, so while you are walking, while you are no, the resting, while you are sleeping, just try to reflect Araham, Araham, Araham. So, when it becomes a habit, then automatically you will be reflecting Araham, Araham all the time. Not just like when you walk, you are, you are swinging your hands. So when it becomes a habit, you don't have to pay attention. So you are swinging your hands all the time when you are walking. The same thing when you, you know, reflect on Araham, Araham very, very frequently. You become a habit. So at the automatically where you are go, where you are, you will be reflecting Araham, Araham. So by reflecting Araham, Araham, no, you are no, collecting or accumulating billions of good karmas every second. So at the time of near death, definitely you will be reflecting Araham, Araham. So when you die, no, definitely you will be born either celestial realm or human realm, where you want to be. <laughs> so the same thing if you want loving kindness, just try to reflect. May all living beings be happy and well. May all living beings be happy and well. So that would be a good preparation for that. Now the time goes no, goes by very quickly. So one hour already passed by. Now I would just like to tell you how to practice anapanasti. Not just the first step. We don't have time to not to, to refer to the book. So I say tomorrow, no, you, when you come there, 
try to reflect on these four guided meditations about five to ten minutes each. So you spend about half an hour for this. Then for the next half an hour, try to do anapanasti. No, anapanasti means reflecting on the inbred and outbred. So the inbred and the outbred is our meditation subject. No, we have to know the inbred and the outbred. Then only you can do this anapanasti. So the Buddha advises us not to sit under the cross-legged. So no, usually the, the, the easy way is not to put your, your leg down and then put you know, your right limb above that. And keep your body erect, the Buddha said. No, keep it right. So by doing that, no, so you can you can sit, no, a long for a longer period actually. You have no good balance actually. And in the beginning, you may have you know, difficulty even to put the, uh, the legs like this. So or maybe some after some time, no, you may you may feel the pain. So in that case, you just put you no know, put this leg down, put them parallel. No, put them parallel like that, so they are not pressing each other, so that you can sit more comfortably. So, no, the Buddha, he prefers this, uh, the, no, the, this city. Now, by keeping our body erect, we can breathe. No, we can breathe you know, very well, breathe in, breathe out very well, so we have enough air. So that will keep us you know, very healthy. Then, no, you, you should keep your hand. No, so you should keep your hand. So no, the, the preferred way is to keep the hand no, above the legs. With the left palm down and the right palm up. And if you can put no, the two thumbs together, it's better. So, or you can just put like that. No, so you, you stay like this. And after some time, sometimes you know, you, your body bends a little bit. So if you know it's bending down, you better you know, stretch, uh, keep it in back again. No, but relax all your muscles. No, try to remain very comfortable. If you cannot not sit like this, it's not comfortable to you. Try to, to use any comfortable position. It doesn't matter this is. No, the only thing is you, know, you choose any and don't change your posture <laughs> very often. No, don't change very often. So when it becomes very painful, you can change. No, you don't need to bear the pain. So when it becomes very you know, painful and bearable, you just change your position, you can do it. But don't change you know, abruptly. So as soon as you get the pain there, so some people, they turn this way. When they get the pain, they turn this way. <laughs> so just like frying pancakes, <laughs> frying pancakes. <laughs> So that is not doing meditation. <laughs> so five in five cases, you say. So you now when you are, sometimes your body bends down. So you, know, uh, you may prefer to keep your hands you know, on on the you know, on your knees here. You can uh, you can keep like that also. So whichever you, you like it, then you breathe normally. Close your eye. You must close your eyes. Now you close your eyes so that you don't see anything in front of you. No? So if you see you close, you see a little bit, it will be disturbing. It's not good. No? So it's better to close all the, no, we have six sense door. So we close these five doors. <laughs> we close these five doors. And we open only the mind door. No? That is the way to say, though no, you have eyes, don't look at anything. So close it. Don't you have ears, don't be don't listen to anything. Some, some person may be talking near you or something like that. So what are they talking? Don't pay attention. <laughs> so there may be sometimes some noises not around there. So again, don't take notice of that. May that be the, the noises. If you don't take notice, no disturbance. Just try to focus on the inbred and outbred. So now, after you know, sitting erect and uh, relaxed, you close your eyes and breathe normally. So everything should be natural, no? Just normally. Now you know you breathe in, you breathe out. And you should focus your attention only around the nostril. No? So don't 
try to do think of that, to think of that, try to think of your body, something like that. So any pain may arise, don't pay attention. If you pay attention, you disturb your meditation. No? So we have to you know, focus around the nostril and be aware of the in-breath and the out-breath. So you know you breathe in, you breathe out. No? So the in-breath goes in, the out-breath goes out. So you just keep at the nostril, don't follow the breath inward or outward. Now while you are trying to be aware of the in-breath, out-breath, try to, to know the touching point, the touching of the breath, either around the two nostrils or at the upper lip. No? So some people, no, they, they feel that the, 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 no, the, the touching is distinct around the two nostrils, mostly. The two nostrils, if we are breathing with the two nostrils, so no, the touch will be both around the nostril. The air goes in, the air goes out, so there will be the touch around that. So in that case, you just choose one nostril, whichever you like, no, the left or the right, which is more distinct, you should, you should choose the more distinct one. Then you just focus on one nostril, then the touching will be more distinct. Then, when it is uh, the touching all around uh, the nostril, you just choose one point which is most distinct, most distinct. And actually, if you focus at the, the tip of the nose, you can feel the, the touching at the tip of the nose. So if there is any touch, no, like, like uh, the, on, on the side of the nostril here, so just uh, fix your attention on that point. No? And if the touch is at the upper lip, so you just choose there. No, wherever the touch, so you, you choose the most distinct point. And we watch the in-breath and the out-breath from that touching point. That is, no, you just wait from that touching point. When you breathe in, this is the touching point. The in-breath no, will touch it, will flow in, so you know the, this in-breath by the general touch. And when you breathe out, Again, the out flows, and you know that the out by the gentle touch. We cannot see the breath, so we have to know it by the touch. No, we have to know it by the touch. So when you breathe in, so try to be aware of the in by the touch. Don't follow the breath, no, either inward or out You just keep your mind at that touching point, no, so that you develop one pointedness of the mind, that is concentration. No, so try to be aware of the in breath, the out breath, the in breath, the out breath. So when it becomes quite distinct, no? just try to, no, to relax and no, oh, close all the doors. We say, so no, you shut all the doors, then you are by yourself. No, you you cut off from the outside world, so you are alone. No, so we say. No, that is seclusion. No, and you get the, the peace of seclusion. The Buddha, he admire it. We call it Vikvika Sukha. No, the peace of seclusion. So, no, don't think of anything. Don't allow any thoughts to come in. So if the thoughts are coming in, no, so you should increase your mindfulness of the inbred and outbred. No, so if your mind is wandering, so try to be aware of the in and out-breath. So if you are mindful of the in and out-breath all the time, so the mind will not go away. It will just mind there. But at the beginning, usually, not the mind is restless and wandering. So you can use the counting method. So it is very good. The counting method will control your mind better. So the way we count is, we, you breathe in, you breathe out, you count one. Breathe in, breathe out, you count two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They say you should count not less than five and not more than ten. So we take the middle point, not the number eight. And also in respect of the eightfold noble part. So you count from one to eight, one to eight. No, again and again. So while you are counting from one to eight, no, you make a determination, determination. I won't let my mind wander away. 
no, during the count from one to eight. So when you can control from one to eight, oh, you are successful one round. So another round, one to eight again. So you are successful another round. So you just go continue like that. Okay. Well, question time. Now, anyone who would like to, to ask question, you are welcome.